Hi, my name is Beth Shulman and today I'll be discussing how the integration of Graham Wallace's creative process can truly increase innovation in the workplace, especially when it comes to ideation and product development. So let's say you work at a product development firm and were assigned with creating and designing a new product. What are the best steps that can be taken to complete the assignment with a successful product? Here's your assignment. Pause this video and take a few minutes to design a new smartwatch. Be sure to consider the aesthetics, functions, and materials. When you're done, think about the process you went through to get to that finished product. Now, do you think your product will be a success? Well, the success does not completely lie in the finished product itself, but also the process taken to get there. Let's take a closer look at this process. Graham Wallace's five-stage process includes preparation, incubation, intimation, illumination, and verification. Stage one, or preparation, is the accumulation of related knowledge, gathering materials, communicating with others, development of skills, and everything needed to ensure that you can reach your final goal. This means that after receiving an assignment, ensure that you have a goal or a vision and you have everything needed to craft that vision. Pro tip, I suggest that you also prepare a backup plan. Once the problem has been analyzed in all aspects, one can immerse themselves into the creation of their project. So embark on your idea, start making some models, and continue chipping away on the project at hand. Stage two, incubation. Contrary to popular belief, time away from one's work can actually advance them towards success. This stage is called incubation, a voluntary step where one walks away from the drawing board and allows thinking to progress without conscious awareness. This relaxation allows for the connection of prepared materials to current surroundings. Yeah, I said it. Stop working on the project and dive into something completely unrelated. This space will allow for your brain to make connections in the future. Stage 3, intimation, is described as a mysterious yet magical moment where you're at the brink of consciousness of your idea and just how great it can be. At this moment, take a minute, pat yourself on the back, and keep going. This is a time to think about how far you have come and realize how your efforts are worth it. Intimation, however, quickly becomes illumination, the fourth stage. Illumination is not to be confused with the aha myth. Rather than suddenly being struck by an idea, illumination is the culmination of all your work and it's just starting to come together. The fifth and final stage, verification, includes examining the details and testing the latest version to ensure that your product or idea is functional, novel, and well suited for the assignment. It is totally possible that you may have to go back and tweak your models or even go as far back to the drawing board, but that is totally okay because like I said, success lies in the process and if followed wholeheartedly, it can lead to successful products as well. Essentially, this process, which most of you have unknowingly been through, allows for the creator to be prepared for work and in control of their progress. Now, after learning and understanding about the benefits of Wallace's creative process, how can organizations integrate it into the workplace? Because creativity and innovation are such rich and multifaceted concepts, a sharp and adaptable leader is needed to harness these skills in order to cultivate a culture of creativity and innovation. One way a leader of an organization can develop creativity and innovation in the workplace is by simply taking the time to acknowledge Wallace's creative process. By simply educating employees that the process exists allows for them to be aware of it when they inevitably go through it. In addition to knowing the process, practicing it can help too. One way to do this is by holding weekly or daily activities in which employees are encouraged to exercise that part of their brain. This could be as easy as a 10 minute design a product assignment, just like the one I stated in the beginning of this presentation. In fact, Tom and David Kelly also propose divergence thinking tests such as mind mapping, idea journaling, and the circle exercises. If this process is introduced and integrated correctly, companies and organizations can experience an expanse in idea generation, development, and quality, which can later transcend into product innovation. Not only does this boost innovation in the workplace, but it also sparks individual creativity. I hope this inspired you, and thank you for listening.